Hello, Mama. I'm home. Hello, Caesar. Welcome home. Long time no see. Yes, Mama. I'm back home now, though. Where have you been, Caesar? Well, Mama, you know, I like to look around. Wonder. I've been looking at new things. Trying new things. Well, that's great, Caesar. Mama, did you get a new outfit? That's a nice dress. Yes, yeah, Caesar. Some purple octopus told me all about it. Hello and welcome to Caesar's Snack Sandwich. Today we're on Phantom, taking a look at Phantom, the Phantom blockchain, okay? So this is something that I've heard about recently and uh, I'm pretty interested in it because, you know, I'm always looking around for new and cool things. And, uh, you know, I like to look around and find out what's new and what's useful for me in my current position. So this is something that was told to me recently and I thought I'd take a look at it. Now today I'm going to take a quick overview and just talk a little bit about certain little aspects of it. I'm not going to go deep into anything specific but I'll give you a quick quick overview and maybe another day I'll make another video with some more detailed uh, aspects of this blockchain. So let's go straight into the first one, introduction or intro to phantom. <clears throat> So when you go to the intro to Phantom, there is, uh, you know, basically talks a little bit about blockchains and so forth. And then, you know, why Phantom is necessary and stuff like that, you know, talking about, you know, speed and security and, and uh, stuff like that and cheapness. And then here it says, so this is some of the key aspects. Okay, so why Phantom? Why does Phantom work? How does it work? Sorry. And then this is the key thing here is modular. So there's pieces, like pieces go together. It's not an entire like... Like it is a blockchain in the sense, but you know, when you create something like a dApp or something, it would just be a piece that connects onto the existing uh, pieces that are already part of the blockchain. So as a result, you know, it uses the virtual uh, Ethereum virtual machine. So it's completely compatible with the Ethereum and developers can port their existing dApps within minutes. So if you have a, an application like say Aave on Ethereum, then you can very quickly copy it and paste it right into this blockchain. So that's fantastic, that's quick, that's easy, that's good, right? Now another thing, scalable. So because these pieces are like modular, they don't actually create a lot of congestion between the other pieces. So normally on Ethereum or on most blockchains as, as maybe one application gets a lot of traffic then all the applications slow down because that single application has a lot of traffic. Or, you know, these general, these 10 applications, they slow down everything. But this is not the case here. So usually, you know, if this has got a lot of traffic, this might be slowed down a bit, but these other ones, they are modular. So they're, it's scalable in that sense because they're modular. So they would continue to be quite fast. And I assume cheap as well. Um, going down, so it's uh, environmental friendly. Now this is just a, speak on because it's proof of stake. If you know proof of work, you know, Bitcoin and currently Ethereum, they use a lot of electricity to mine and to mint and to create security. But this is used as proof of stake. Now, if you don't know what proof of stake is, it's complicated and I don't want to get into it all right now, but uh, it's much cheaper. It's basically, in, if you, this is, you know, use electricity and a lot of computing power to secure it. And this is, if you do anything wrong, you lose a bunch of your money. So you know, for the people running the computers. So if the people running the computers do anything wrong, then they lose money. So that's the key aspect of proof of stake. Okay, so open source. So anyone can use Phantom. It's, you know, completely free to use. If anyone wants to build or learn about it or, you know, copy it or do whatever they want, they can. It's permissionless. Now this is very important. There's uh, some other blockchains, even ones that I use, that are not really permissionless. You cannot run a node unless you have permission from the blockchain or you have some sort of, you know, multi-sig or some sort of, some sort of permission from somewhere. But here, you, if you want to run a node, you just need to have this many FTM to stake and you need to, you know, it's proof of stake. If you mess up, then you're going to start losing this stake. So, you know, you, you probably have to learn a lot about how to run a validator node. But if you do run a validator node, then you can get rewarded. Now, another thing is people can stake their, because it's a proof of stake, then people can stake their tokens and get rewarded for staking tokens. But I'll get into that more later. And then it talks a little bit where it's going. So we're not going to get into that. Back to technology, stake on Phantom. 
So this is the staking part. So this is pretty great. You know, you use a calculator here right off the bat. It's very user friendly. So let's say I had, you know, maybe 10,000 FTM tokens and I, I wanted to stake it for how long? So stake is basically lock it in, right? So maybe I wanted to lock it in for 218 days. So uh, 561 FTM, so 9%. And the longer you stake it, the higher the APY pretty much. So it's kind of like a linear, there's a linear graph down here somewhere. So basically like this, the longer you stake, the more you're gonna get. And if you go all the way down to the bottom, it's about 4%. So this is kind of here where it says stake as you go, 4%. So basically this is kind of like, you know, just stake it, but you can take it anytime you want. There's no lock-in. So you're going to get 4% by just doing that. So that's fantastic. And, you know, well, it does say here for two weeks and so forth. So, you know, stake as you go, I guess would be two weeks, right? Even though it says here, you know, yeah, 14 days is the minimum. You see 14 days and it's 4%. So the minimum is 14, uh, two weeks. And that's basically what they call stake as you go. So you got wallet deposit, blah, 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 blah. Um, and this talks more about, you know, the validator nodes. I'm going to talk a little bit about validator nodes when I open up the actual wallet and show you something there. So in the FTM token, the token of it. So there's four main uses for the token. One is secures the network because it's proof of stake. So people have to stake the tokens. If they mess up, they lose their tokens. You can use this token for payments. So, you know, I want to pay for my sandwich. I can send you some FTM tokens, right? And it's fast, it's cheap, so it's not too bad. Um, On-chain governance, so you want to vote for something, you can use the FTM token. And then network fees, you know, pay the gas. So if you want to pay gas, you're gonna pay with these FTM tokens. So the FTM tokens have quite a few uses. So it's like cash, pay for fees, and, uh, and all these other things, okay? So that's pretty good. So you can read through this, that's basically the same idea here. And that's it, so let's go on to the next one. So FTM token which I did, and now these things here, they talk a little bit more in detail, like especially this, like how the actual consensus works. So going over to, that's the consensus, and then this is the name of the chain, the actual blockchain, and uh, talking a little bit about DeFi, but I will talk about that more when I open up the wallet. So you go to tools, and this is where you can see the wallet. The wallet's very interesting. I will talk about it again when I open the wallet. And then we have these two options for like a scan or Opera Explorer. So this is basically like, Etherscan, and this is basically tells you data about the blockchain. So this is basically, you know, telling you, you know, how many validators there are, how many blocks there's been written. It's basically stats for the actual blockchain and how many transactions all displayed out here. And this is basically like, you know, like Etherscan, you know, you want to check your wallet, you want to check the transaction, what happened, where did the money go, what happened, all that, this in here. Okay. So it's basically that. Now enterprise, this is basically talking a little bit about what kind of things companies can do with it. There's a lot of details in here that you could probably look into. Um, solutions. Now here are a whole bunch of like uh, articles, like in-depth articles. You click on these and you will open up long depth articles on possible uses for this blockchain. Now it's pretty much the standard stuff. You know, you could use this for a central bank digital currency, uh, tokenized real estate, uh, you know, healthcare, you know, decentralized finance. So pretty much all of the use cases that are known right now, they're pretty much all here, right? So you can use it for everything pretty much. Go to the ecosystem about us. Let's open that. And it talks about, you know, the, the people who built this, you know, the team. Now, there's a lot of people in here. Um, I don't really know most of these people, actually. I don't know any of them. Well, I know this guy, of course. Uh, if it, you most, most likely know that I know this guy. Um, and go dang, down, 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 down. Most of these, but they're all, you know, out here. They're all, you know, they're, there's no anonymous people. There's no cartoon characters. There's no people you don't know, which is good. Or bad, I don't know, that's your choice. That's what some people want this, some people don't. But I think with inside a, like a blockchain, you wanna know everybody who's taking part. It's not necessarily just a individual protocol. Ecosystem, the roadmap. The roadmap is pretty in depth, okay? I'm not gonna read through all of this. Uh, you can probably read through this a lot, but I will just randomly choose a couple to give you an op opportunity. Add fee estimates for transactions. Uh, let's go to this one. Uh, nodes will be able to download, load, and validate snapshots. And maybe this one right here. We have identified several scalabilities and security concerns due to the uh, EVM, the Ethereum virtual machine. So my point of this is that no matter what you choose in here, it's quite in depth. They have specific roadmap goals. They're not just like, oh, we wanna launch the main net. 
No, no, no. They, they have exact ideas, you know, prune unreachable peers from the node locals record, whatever that means. I don't know, but it's very specific, right? So they have exact specific goals laid out here and a lot of them. So this is good. I think this is shows a level of organization that's lacking in some aspects of the cryptocurrency ecosystem. And uh, so that's a roadmap and partners in integrations. Now, again, I can't get through all of these, but I will just quickly skim down and talk a bit about some of them. So first of all, we have some oracles. We have both Chainlink and Band. Now, these are both competitors, but they plan on using both of them on this blockchain, which is great. You know, now, if you don't know what an oracle is, then that's probably a topic for another video. But basically, they tell the blockchain data that the blockchain cannot find itself, like maybe prices of things outside the blockchain, or maybe they collect all the data on the blockchain and give it to the one individual protocol that wants it. So there's a whole bunch in here. You know, Ren, this is a very popular BTC into Ethereum bridge. And there's a whole bunch, you know, like you can go through these and find them, but there is a few at the bottom that I really want to show off. Um, Travelia, if you don't know what that is, it's a travel website, lots of money, I guess. And uh, the, the electrical company of Afghanistan. So the actual company, uh, electrical company of Afghanistan is invested in this. Um, the Afghanistan Chamber of Commerce and Investment. So, you know, they've given money. The Ministry of Health for Afghanistan. So it's all Afghanistan for the most part, but, uh, you know, that's up to you to decide whether you think that's important or not. Um, some pharmaceutical companies, uh, down, 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 down. Hey, uh, tokenized real estate in Africa. I believe this is a corporation or some sort of individual uh, entity, not the actual Africa, like entire continent, right? So anyhow, you there's quite a few, you know, go through them, decide how much or importance or whatever you have in that. And then there's also the ecosystem. There's the blog, the FAQ, the community. And if you want to get a job with them, you can come here. Now, I also did open up this chat room and tried to get a chat and I was replied to quite quickly and they solved the problem that I had quite quickly. So you, the chat is quite good. And you know, you go to the discord and all that as well. Um, there's documentations. So if you want to get really in depth stuff, you can come to these in these documentations, the white papers and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, this is guides how to set up a MetaMask and how to set up a validator node. So if you're looking to do that, you can do that, but you don't need MetaMask. That's what's great. So let's go over to the wallet. So here's the wallet. Now the wallet's a browser wallet. Now it does, like I said, you could set it up with MetaMask, but they could use the browser wallet. So I would suggest you, if you are gonna use this browser wallet, then you bookmark this and make sure you're always at the right browser wallet because it's gonna ask you for your password. And you know anyone could copy the look of this and just ask you for your seed phrase and mm, that's not a good thing, right? So go to home. Currently, I don't have any money in here, but uh, I could easily put some money. This is connecting the, the MetaMask wallet, restore the wallet if I have another wallet, create a wallet and so forth, right? And then here I can create context about who, who the people I'd like to send money to. So I don't need to remember them. So here's the wallet. And this is really interesting, the bridge. So they have a bridge here. So if I want to send Phantom to Phantom, it's quite easy. And I can go to Ethereum and I could send from the Ethereum. I, it's basically a decentralized bridge. I'm not going to do this today because it costs, you know, 100 FTM and I haven't decided if I want to bring all my money, all my FTM tokens in here or not. But, you know, I just copy this and send the FTM in. And it's a decentralized contract, I'm told. So I haven't read a lot about the details of it. And so that's why I haven't used it yet. But I'm told it's a decentralized contract. So I will send my ERC20 token into that contract. It'll be held in escrow. And then they will mint me the same token in the Phantom network or in the Phantom blockchain. And I can do it. So I can also go from Binance chain. Now be careful, this is BEP2, not BEP20. So this is not Binance Smart Chain, but rather Binance Chain. So don't, you know, don't try to send from Binance Smart Chain to here, okay? And you can't even find this token on Binance Smart Chain because I did check already. So staking, so like I said, come here for staking. So I did do some research on this staking a little bit. Uh, if you wanted to add some, some money to a validator, you'd have to choose the validator, right? So there's a large list of validators. And I said, hey, is there any kind of like calculations I need to take into account? You know, you know, is there some sort of saturation like ADA or some sort of problems like, you know, staking with validators on um, 
dot is quite complicated. And they said, no, it's quite easy. You just choose anybody and you can stick them in there. However, they do have lockup periods. So all of these, like these nodes, they will lock for maybe a year and you cannot stake for, you cannot lock your tokens for longer than them. So you basically would go to here and you would open up his Twitter or you would go here and you would open up his website or you go to here. So you basically you find one that you can talk to and, uh, you know, try to talk to them and find out how long can you stake with them. Maybe you can talk to them and find out how good they are. There's a lot of data here, you know, like their ID. And uh, I remember before I couldn't, I can't find it right now. Um, anyhow, there was some, some data about how long they've been up or down, but for some reason it's not showing there. So anyhow, so you can find the delegators and you can delegate with them. So stake with them and you can get some of that 4% that I was talking about or more, depending on how long you stake with them. So over to DeFi, currently DeFi, they have F-Mint. So if you use your, uh, your tokens, you can, if you have tokens here, you can use them to mint synthetic other tokens. So I'm not going to get into this. This is a topic for another video, but I'll give you a quick look at it. And the tokens that are currently minted, you have some F you know, FTM is turned into wrapped FTM and synthetic FTM and some silver link, uh, gold, Japanese yen, uh, Chinese yuan, uh, Swiss francs, you know, so there's Bitcoin, uh, BNB and band. So there's a fair amount so far, right? So you can, you know, s swap through these tokens if you wanted to get price action to them and so forth. Um, there's a swap, which is basically you, another button here, over here, you, F uni. So you could go here and you could swap between one token to another token, just basically like uni swap, right? And go back to DeFi and F lend is, it says coming soon. So, you know, you could lend your, your coins and borrow other coins. So there's not a whole lot going on here yet, but I do see a potential. It's, as you can see, it's quite fast. I'm uh, using Wi-Fi to jump through through these so it's it's quite fast and the governance down here so you can you know vote on some sort of uh proposals you see refund for slash validator refund for slash validator so these maybe these guys got slashed a little bit and they explained themselves and now they're letting people vote to refund that slash or not and then some settings down here so you know, change your us dollars or your currency your decimal points and all this kind of stuff Okay, so that pretty much covers the a general overlook of this phantom wallet and this phantom blockchain. I think it's worth looking at. I think it's worth uh, considering in the future. And, uh, you know, right these days, you know, DeFi is pretty rough. And I have been seeing some tweets around about people utilizing phantom as a backbone, as a, you know, behind the scenes of their protocol. So like maybe, um, maybe Curve instead of sending it all through the blockchain, all the trades through the blockchain on Ethereum, they could, you know, send the actual swaps through here and then, you know, give you your token back on Ethereum or whatever, you know, there's there's possibilities, right? Um, so that's pretty much it. So I think uh, that I've covered enough for today and uh, you can look deeper if you want, okay? Thanks for watching and goodbye.